welcome to worship at First Baptist Church, Brantford. Thank you to all who are participating in our service. Nancy Willemont, our Minister of Music, Joan Foster, our pianist, and Mark Eisner, assisting us with streaming. Our scripture today from the Gospel of John takes us back to that final meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. John does not describe this as a Passover meal, as the other Gospel writers do. This meal happens on the night before Passover begins. But John gives us something that other writers do not. He tells us in great detail what Jesus said to his disciples during this final night they had together. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. Jesus told the disciples that they will be known to others by their acts of loving. We too are called to love others as a mark of our discipleship. We are reminded that Christian witness can take many forms, but it always involves love. Let us hear the hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies. friends if you do what I command you. 
I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Thanks be to God for this gospel. Our gospel on this sixth Sunday of the Easter season comes from Jesus' farewell speech to the disciples. The, dis the speech highlights a unique feature of John's gospel. In John's telling of Jesus' story, the public ministry of Jesus ends in chapter 12. The story of his arrest, death, and resurrection does not begin until chapter 18. The in-between chapters are called the farewell discourse. On the last night of his life, Jesus offers the disciple counsel wisdom that he hopes will sustain them through what will come. Words like, be kind to one another, know God's peace, trust that you are not abandoned, love one another as I have loved you. I am the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me, make a home in me. I will not leave you orphaned. Because I live, you will live also. Let not your hearts be troubled. The disciples had been with Jesus for three years. They had traveled with him, eaten with him, listened to his teachings, witnessed signs and wonders. And now, on this night, all was quiet. The crowds were far away. This was Jesus' last opportunity to say what he wanted to say. Instead of addressing his disciples as students, he addressed them with the intimacy that conveys the poignancy of this special moment in his life. Little children, he said to these growing men, listen to me now. I am getting ready to go to a place where you cannot come so it is important that we have this time together. He reminds them what he is about and why he is telling them all of this now, so that later they will remember it and it will help them as they face Jesus' death and then later still as they themselves are sent into the world with the abiding presence of God's Spirit. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Jesus got right to the point. He urged the disciples to be patient with one another in the days ahead. Coming on the heels of the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet and of Judas' betrayal, Jesus' command has the tone of an earnest plea. Care for one another. Forgive one another, encourage one another, love one another. The call to love forms the core of what Jesus chose to, his, to say to his disciples through this tender farewell speech. Over and over, Jesus tells his friends that even when he becomes physically absent from them, they are called to live out their faith, their relationship with him, by doing love for one another. As a community of people who are so loved by God, who have been told and who know they are loved ones of Jesus, loving each other is to be their response. According to the Gospel of John, living out that kind of love Working for each other's well-being is the central purpose 
for followers of Jesus. This is the kind of act of love that defines the community of believers. This act of love is what we are called to live out, first for each other, so that together we can then live it out in the world. Love is what we hope the world notices, being fully expressed between those who follow Jesus, people doing love for each other in ways that encourage and build up and proclaim God's grace. Love that is worked out in kindness and gentleness, patience and hospitality. Friends, let us commit ourselves to do our best, to live on our call to be known by our love, to be known for working on behalf of the well-being of others, to relate as family in Christ, even when it gets difficult. The way we love each other, the way we love this broken world, the way we love God, what a witness to the gospel that is, for that is what is at stake, our ability and our authenticity to bear witness as living testimonies to the overwhelming love of our God who claims love for all people. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus' words were said in the midst of betrayal and denial in the midst of departure and desperation, in the midst of fear and unease. This is the nature of Christian love. It is present and practiced in the most challenging of times. Let us commit ourselves to do our best, to live out our call to be known by our love, to relate as family in Christ, in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us unite in prayer. Loving God, in the stillness of this moment, let the hush of your presence fall upon us. We open ourselves this day to the infusion of the life-giving indwelling of your spirit. 
Meet us at the point of our deepest need and our highest aspiration as we offer to you our prayers. Through Christ Jesus, you have taught us to love one another, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and even to love our enemies. Help us to see each person in light of the love and grace you have shown us in Christ. Give us the strength and courage to transform the compassion of our hearts into acts of peace, mercy, and justice. Forgive us when we choose not to care, to look the other way, to stop listening. Empower us to live what we believe. Make us channels of your peace, bearers of healing, people whose love is patient and kind, not envious, boastful, arrogant, or rude. People whose love bears all things, hopes all things, endures all things, whose love never ends. O oh God, we are grateful for your every blessing and for your presence through all of life. In our joys and sorrows, in our hopes and fears, we ask now that your gifts of healing, faith, hope, and love would be with the people and situations we name before you. We remember the sick, whether at home, in hospital, or long-term care. We pray for those directly affected by COVID-19, healthcare providers, those in essential services, researchers, and scientists, we pray for the vulnerable at home, in hospital, for the sick, for the unemployed, for the homeless, and for the families and friends of those with the virus. We remember all who are frightened and discouraged, those in despair, the lonely. We pray for those who are burdened by feelings of insecurity or inadequacy, and frightened by what lies ahead of them. Grant them your peace and strengthening presence. We pray for those who mourn, enfold them in your love, and lead them through this time into your light. Loving God, reveal yourself to us, dwell with us, and abide with us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom we live, and through the Spirit of Truth, who abides in us. We pray in Jesus' name, who taught his followers to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Baptist Brantford Sunday School. My name is Jamie. Together through prayer, scripture, and crafts, we will learn of God's word for us today. Let us begin by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today's Bible reading is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents as the Lord wants, because this is the right thing to do. The command says, honor your father and mother. This is the first command that has a promise with it. Then everything will be well with you, and you will have a long life on the earth. Today is Mother's Day Sunday. Mother's Day is a celebration honoring the mother of the family as well as motherhood, maternal bonds, and the influence of mothers in society. Its roots can be traced back to ancient Greeks and Romans who held festivals in honor, in honor of the mother goddesses. It is celebrated on various days in many parts of the world, but here in Canada, it is celebrated on the second Sunday in May. Today, we're going to learn about some of the mothers in the Bible. Some followed God, some didn't. They made mistakes. Some were remembered for them. Others were remembered for their love of God, their children, and others. Let's see what we can learn from these women. 
Eve was the first wife and mother. She shared a special relationship with God until she sinned. Eve ate fruit from the tree that God had forbidden her to do so. She ate it anyway, and as a result, we, we have been born with a sinful nature because of Eve. Sarah. Sarah, Sarah became Isaac's mother when she was over a hundred years old. She was Abraham's wife who laughed at the promise that she would have a child. Before Isaac was born, she got impatient to have a baby and tried to take matters into her own hands. But God blessed her anyways with a son, Rebekah. Rebekah was Isaac's wife and, and Esau and Jacob's mother. She was a beautiful woman who first noticed because she served others unselfishly. She was a hard worker. Rebekah followed God, but she did make Jacob her favorite son. Because of that, she convinced him to steal his brother's blessing. This caused a lot of problems. Josebed. Josebed was the mother of Moses. When she gave birth to Moses, there was an order to kill of all the Hebrew baby boys. In faith, she didn't kill her son, but hid him for three months. Pharaoh's daughter found Moses in the river. Years later, he became the hero who led the Israelites out of Egypt into freedom. Hannah. Hannah was the mother of Samuel, a judge, a, a judge of Israel. She was unable to have children for many years, but called out to God to give her a son. And in return, she promised to give Samuel to God for his whole life, and she did. She heard prayer and Samuel was born. Elizabeth was the mother of John the Baptist who prepared the way for Jesus. The angel Gabriel told her husband, Zachariah, that she would have a baby at a very old age. He, de he didn't believe this at first, but it was true. Elizabeth was a woman who followed God. And Mary, Mary was the mother of Jesus. She was chosen by God to have Jesus because God saw something special in her. She was an ordinary girl, but she obeyed God in extraordinary circumstances. She knew the word of God well. And as you can tell, some of the biblical mothers did what was right in God's eyes. They prayed, they were hardworking, beautiful, faithful, and strong, like your mother maybe, but each of them had their moments. We have read that they were sometimes sneaky, disobedient, and impatient, perhaps like your mother also. But wait, could that describe us too? Are we sometimes sneaky, disobedient, and impatient? The good news is that God loves us even when we are impatient and do wrong things. In our Bible reading, it says that we should honor our parents. Some of the ways we can do this are to be thankful, listen better, show respect, give gifts of our time by helping out when we can. These are some of the ways we can show honor and respect. And in First Baptist Church Sunday School, when we meet in person on Mother's Day, we make cards to give our mothers. Here are two that are made. As you can see on both cards I have, they just have the simple message of Happy Mother's Day. And on the first one I made, it shows some nice butterflies and then some colored font. And inside it just says, enjoy this blessed day today. And then First Baptist Church. And then the second card, you can see there's some rhinestones and some hearts on the front. And it also says, happy Mother's Day. And on the inside, it just says, God bless you. May Mother's Day and each day be filled with happiness. First Baptist Church. Now let us pray. Dear God, thank you that you have given each of us people to care for us. Thank you especially for our mothers. Please bless our Mother's Day today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. And friends, wherever you go, God is there. So whatever happens, you are not alone. Thank you for joining us today. Bye for now.